Good morning. A warm welcome to all our visitors and friends to St Francis Church. We give thanks for the ability to once again gather to celebrate the Eucharist. Before we begin our celebration, please remember to silence your mobile devices, maintain a safe distance between you, and keep wearing your face masks throughout this celebration. Further information around the reception of Holy Communion will be provided prior to the distribution of Communion. Thank you for listening and welcome to today's celebration of the Eucharist. dear friends, with joyful hearts as we open our hearts and lives to the Lord and to one another. Welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us now turn and ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness.
Let us pray. Lord our God, you are the one God and there is no other. Give us grace to hear and heed the great commandment of your kingdom that we may love you with all our heart and love our neighbour as ourselves. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the prophet set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And after, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord, that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was he to offer himself again and again, as a high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, Christ has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that comes the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Jesus was teaching in the temple, and a large crowd was listening to him. He said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had 
all she had to live for. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, today the unsung heroine of today's liturgy is a woman, the widow that is mentioned in the Gospel. In ancient Israel there were classes of society who were especially vulnerable. Widows, yes, orphans and strangers, that is, the non-Jewish persons of their society. Some backstory, some backstory for the first reading. The prophet Elijah is being hunted down by King Ahab and his queen Jezebel. Elijah seeks refuge first in the wilderness, then when the stream where he is staying dries up because of the drought, he flees Israel altogether for the coastal region of Phoenicia and on the outskirts of the, the city there he asks first for a drink of water. <coughs> then in Bolden he asks the pagan widow for bread. She says that despite knowing that she is going to have to give the prophet everything that her son and she have to live on. In the second reading, Jesus is presented by the author of the letter to the Hebrews as the only true priest. But this priestly ministry is carried out in heaven. Jesus there has not sacrificed any animals as the priests of the old covenant did. He offered himself, and that once and for all. In contrast to the scribes and the misunderstanding of his would-be disciples, the evangelist Mark shows us examples of women of faith. He began this process several weeks ago with the woman, with the hemorrhaging woman. Then today, sorry, uh, then we have the Syrophoenician woman with the sick daughter who begs Jesus for help. And now, today, with Jesus and his disciples, we observe the widow who puts in two small coins in the treasury. And we have yet to meet the woman who will anoint the head 
of Jesus with expensive perfume. These four women are chosen as exemplary figures whom society may well have considered last of all, but they are in fact the very first. They are all models of discipleship. This has been a very eventful week for us. The astonishing discovery of the little girl that was lost in WA and her dramatic rediscovery engendered quite an extraordinary outpouring of gratitude and joy, not only in Western Australia, but we here as well, and also with the profusion of the media reports right around the world. Yep, events have been, of course, that Victoria has come out of lockdown. On a lighter note, the Melbourne Cup was successfully run, and the mayor, uh, very elegant, wins the Cup. And what's more, Victoria now has 80% of its population doubly vaccinated. And last of all, perhaps sadly so, the state funeral for our much beloved television presenter, Bert Newton. Liturgically, we are rapidly approaching the climax of Jesus' mission, namely his Passover in Jerusalem. His mission will continue in his church, in us who are his disciples. The newly <coughs> consecrated bishop, Martin Ash, was here the other night to baptize, confirm, and give First Communion to our catechumens and welcome them into the Christian community. Let this be also a sign of hope and joy for us. Stand now and together let us proclaim our shared faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus became poor for our <coughs> sake, that we might be rich in his love. In the spirit of that love, let us pray for the world and all who live in it. We pray for the whole of creation, that World Leaders and UNESCO Climate Summit will commit to the actions needed to limit global warming. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for nations burdened with poverty, that they will not be even further disadvantaged by climate change and the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for scientists of every kind, that their expertise and endeavours will serve the cause of world peace and development. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for local churches around the world, that they will welcome Pope Francis' call to participate in preparations for the Roman Synod on Synodality. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for refugees and asylum seekers, especially those held in detention by Australia that they will be treated with full respect for their human rights. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for secondary and tertiary students engaged in final exams, that their disrupted studies will not deny them the achievement they hope for. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the recently deceased, for those whose names appear in the memorial book in the front porch, and for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time, and for all who are brought to mind by Remembrance Day, that they will be blessed with the everlasting peace of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your Son emptied himself that we might be filled with his life. Grant us the courage to give freely of ourselves in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving and almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter, Julian, Amard, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite you to come forward to receive Holy Communion today. Our friendly ushers are on site to guide you. Please come forward one row at a time via the centre aisle and return via the side. For those sitting in the side transepts, please remain seated until you are called forward.
Continue to maintain a safe distance between each other and use the hand sanitizer as provided. Please continue to wear your face masks and only briefly lower the mask to consume the Holy Eucharist. Communion will only be distributed in your hand.
We thank you for joining us in this celebration of the Eucharist. Here are some notices before we take our leave today. Weekday Mass times are 11 a.m., 12.30 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. The church will be open at 10 a.m., remain open throughout the day for private prayer and close after the last Mass. Sacrament of Reconciliation times are weekdays from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Saturday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. The Pastoral Centre reception is open between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. from Sunday to Friday. Tea and coffee service will return in the new year. After this weekend, there will no longer be the 3.30 p.m. Mass on Sunday. The respective family community masses will resume from next weekend, beginning with the Philippine Community Mass on the 14th of November at 3 p.m. The November Mass offerings and Mass request envelopes are available in the front porch. Please make use of these if you would like Mass offered. There was no collection at this Eucharistic celebration. However, if you wish to donate to the church, donation boxes are located near each door. Tap and go facilities are also available for those who prefer to donate with a credit card. For all other up-to-date information, including our November newsletter, please visit our website. Continue to be vigilant to your health and stay well. Thank you and have a safe and pleasant week ahead. Flourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.